Welcome everybody I to so. the uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for August the 13th, 2019. And uh, we're going to begin tonight with an invocation. I've asked uh, the Vice Mayor to offer the invocation. Following that, I'll lead the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, so we'll please stand and Vice Mayor, please. Would you bow with me and pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight Thank you for this nation that we live in. We know that it is truly the greatest nation on earth. We all, and we recognize the freedoms and the many freedoms that we have. We know that there are many other areas, many other countries that do not recognize and have the freedoms that we enjoy. But we also know that within the community that there are those who still are struggling. We pray for those individuals that are. We ask that you be with each of us tonight. Help us to make Christ-like decisions as we make the decisions that affect the city of Franklin. This prayer we offer in Christ's name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Uh, <clears throat> next is an opportunity for citizen comments for items that are not on the agenda. I have no speaker cards for that tonight. Um, I do uh, recognize that we have a number of county commissioners and um, also Diane Giddens uh, from the county and I think they're going to speak later on during the public hearing if that's acceptable to them. Um, and we'll move on to the uh, approval of the minutes. Uh, first for the special work session of uh, July the 2nd, the work session of July the 9th, and the Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting on July the 9th. And I would entertain a motion. Alderman Peterson. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes with a change on the uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman, uh, the item number four, I had voted uh, no on. And it just needs to be changed to to that. I think it said it was uh, unanimous, but it was not. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second to Alderman Bransford. Any discussion, any further clarification? Seeing none, ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes unanimously. Uh, is there anyone tonight from the Census Bureau? Well, uh, I do have a proclamation concerning the 2020 Census that I need to read. And the United States Census is required by the Constitution of the United States of America to conduct a count of the population and provide a history I'm sorry, a historic opportunity for the city of Franklin to help shape the foundation of our society and play an active role in American democracy. Franklin, Tennessee is committed to ensuring every resident is counted. As per the George Washington Institute of Public Policy, nearly $900 billion per year in federal and state funding is allocated to communities based on census data. And census data also determines how many seats each state will have in the U.S. House of Representatives. Also, redistricting of state legislators, county and city councils, and voting districts. And the 2020 census creates hundreds of thousands of jobs across the nation. And whereas every Census Bureau worker takes a lifetime oath to protect confidentiality and ensure that data identifying respondents or their household will not be released or shared for 72 years, and whereas a united voice from business, government, community-based, and faith-based organizations, educators, media, and others will allow the 2020 census message to reach a broader audience providing trusted advocates who can speak positive conversations about the 2020 census. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Mayor and Aldermen support the goals and ideals for the 2020 census and will help promote the dissemination of the 2020 census information to encourage residents' participation in addition to asking government, other government bodies to partner together to achieve an accurate and complete count so every Franklin, Tennessee resident can truly say everyone counts um, and it be further resolved as city mayor of Franklin, Tennessee, I do hereby encourage citizens of Franklin, Tennessee to participate in events and initiatives that will raise overall awareness of the 2020 United States Census and each increased participation among all populations. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Rebecca Kelly, Barry Evans, and Greg Bourne. 
and Rob Naylor to the podium uh, for a presentation. Thank you, Mayor, and greetings to the Board of Aldermen and any elected officials in the room. Today is indeed a day of celebration, not just for the Franklin community, but also for AARP, for our members, and for all people over 50 and their families. Um, AARP Tennessee is thrilled to add the city of Franklin to the growing list of age-friendly communities across our state. We applaud Mayor Ken Moore for making the commitment to upholding the principles outlined by the AARP network of age-friendly communities. For many of us here, I know the term age-friendly may be a little new. <laughs> We mean uh, age friendly means increasing the livability of residents like developing affordable and appropriate housing, uh, transportation options. We're way too dependent on automobiles in this country. Um, opportunities to continue to improve our parks and, and public places, making those intergenerational places for grandparents to bring their grandchildren um, and making sure that we continue to allow older individuals to remain connected in their cities and, and be involved in their communities. This is important as our population ages. Currently one out of three Americans is 50 or over. By 2030, one out of every five people in the United States will be 65 and over. Um, one of my favorite statistics is that by 2030, which is just 11 years from now, <clears throat> the first millennial turns 50, the first Gen Xer turns 65, and we baby boomers turn 85 in 11 short years. I'll say the first baby boomer turns 85. <laughs> so clearly we need to be preparing for a major shift in our population. Um, being age friendly means that the leadership here in Franklin understands the need to make aging issues a priority in policies and in actions. As of April of this year, there are more than 360 cities who are part of AERP's age-friendly network across the country. And that basically means that we come along beside you leaders and offer our support and resources as you go ahead and continue to do some amazing things that you've done here in the Franklin area. Um, I tonight am proud to officially welcome Franklin to join Clark the cities of Clarksville. We now have nine cities in Tennessee. That's Clarksville, Montgomery County, Knoxville, Kingsport, Chattanooga, Crossville, Livingston, and Memphis, who are all age-friendly communities in Tennessee. As you can tell, we have some counties, we have large cities and small cities, and Franklin is now part of that. I'm especially excited because I'm a resident of Franklin, um, and I will tell you that after 23 years of the state office being housed in downtown Nashville in November, we are moving our state office to Franklin. <laughs> so we will be an even, even bigger part of this community, um, hopefully. So to honor and commemorate this day, I would like to present certificates to confirm the membership in the AERP network of age-friendly communities to the city of Franklin. While the mayor's making his way back, I'll add a, a comment on some schedule uh, topics I want to touch on. Uh, one is later this week, on Thursday evening, we have our zoning ordinance open house. So from uh, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here in City Hall, we'll have some specific presentations, but we'll also have uh, stations throughout the hallway where you can learn more about the zoning ordinance, 
how it connects to our land use plan, different elements uh, that relate to that. Uh, that's a project we've been working on for the last oh, year and a half or so and had extensive citizen involvement with Planapalooza earlier this year in February. So this translated into a specific zoning ordinance. Uh, you can go to zonefranklin.com and see the entire ordinance for yourself. Uh, but we'll be here throughout uh, the evening uh, this Thursday uh, to, to answer your questions, present to you, um, and, and to follow that up the next day, that Friday, we'll have office hours that entire day. So you can just pop in if you have follow-up questions or you can't make it or you like to have more one-on-one -on -one discussion than a larger group, uh, that's available to you as well uh, to discuss that. That same evening, uh, we do also have a um, sort of an, another open house going on that uh, provides for public comment and feedback on our CDBG program. Uh, we've just concluded a program year and we're in our public comment period. And so from 615 to 5, or to 6, 515 to 630, apologize for that, uh, we will have that opportunity in the Development Services Conference Room, which is right down the, at the other end of the hall uh, for folks if they wanna um, look at how our Community Development Block Grant program is functioning. Uh, that report will come to the board in September uh, in terms of a specific follow-up. There is one error in our listing of meetings in your board uh, agenda. Our Capital Investment Committee meeting is on August 22nd, not the 29th that was listed here. So uh, just we had uh, checked that with all the aldermen but had not made the proper change in our list of meetings that it will be on the 22nd, the same evening that we have our joint conceptual workshop with the Planning Commission and Planning Commission on, on August 22nd as well. So those are my announcements. Thank you. Any other miscellaneous reports that we need to recognize? If not, we'll go to the consent agenda and all items under the consent agenda are deemed to be non-controversial and routine in nature by the governing body. And tonight we're considering items number 20 through 22. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Seconded by Alderman Berger. Any discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number three. This is a public hearing. Consideration of resolution 2019-42, a resolution adopting a plan of services for the annexation of several properties located east and west of Lewisburg Pike and north and south of the intersection of Stream Valley Boulevard, South Brook PUD subdivision by the city of Franklin, Tennessee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you just said, the drafted plan of services before you is for property being considered as part of the South Brook development plan. The plan of services outlines how infrastructure will need to be provided to serve the proposed annex property. Staff recommends approval. Okay, this is a public hearing. Uh, I'm sorting through the speaker cards here and there is some confusion about them because some people didn't specify uh, particularly which area they wanted to speak to. So uh, does anyone want to speak to the plan of services for the annexation of the properties mentioned? Seeing no one coming forward, I'll close the public hearing and we'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Alderman Speedy. Open for discussion. Seeing none, is there, you ready to vote? All in, favor, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? Passes uh, six to two. Next is, uh, this is public hearing. Item number uh, four is a public hearing. Consideration resolution 2019-41, a resolution to annex several properties located east and west of Lewisburg Pike and north and south of the intersection of Stream Valley Boulevard consisting of 318.49 acres in the South Brook PUD subdivision and joining the city limits within the southern part of Franklin urban growth boundary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. These properties are both north and south of the Stream Valley subdivision, as you can see on the map, um, and they extend across Lewisburg Pike to the west. These properties are all within the urban growth boundary and designated in Envision Franklin as appropriate for conservation subdivision and single family residential uses. A separate zoning request, development plan, and plan of service accompany this annexation request, and staff recommends approval. Okay, those that gave speaker cards that want to address specifically the annexation, uh, please come forward.
Hi, I'm Kathy Weber. I live at 1900 Springcroft Drive in Franklin. Um, the comments that I'm going to be making this evening is uh, pretty much a collective. Excuse me, you group have of two minutes, by the way. Two people, and um, it seems that even from your um, your five o'clock meeting, it shows that everyone's singing the same song. Uh, Alderman Branchford brought it up too about your citizens' comments, your 23 pages of comments on your surveys relative to growth that your citizens and community were involved with, that they're very concerned about the quality of life, costs of schools due to growth. People want to know why our county and all the cities within do not have a regional planning department to have an organized approach to the rapid growth we're experiencing. Why are we not working together for the betterment of the whole county? You had a plan of Palooza for the citizens that work or live and worship in this city and to have a voice as to how they wanted Franklin to grow and to look in the future. These citizens took part and helped create Envision Franklin plan. The issue is not that you want to annex and grow within your agreed upon urban growth boundary, but that you have already aborted the citizens Envision Franklin plan that they spent time and you spent tax dollars on to create. The zoning review open house is not even till Thursday night, and zoning has not yet been agreed upon by the locals and the homeowners. So the question that we have to you is, how can you and or how can your constituents and your neighboring communities of this county ever trust in the process and their government to represent the people if their voices have no value? They came, they participated, they again have not been heard. My name is Janet Curtis. I live at 3665 North Chapel Road. Um, I did not come prepared to speak tonight, but in listening to everybody in the workshop, I became so infuriated. You can wrap anything to look like a beautiful package, but what you are doing is destroying this county. Everyone lives in Williamson County. I don't care if it's the city or the county. You live here. You try to drive 65, Columbia Avenue, Lewisburg Pike after 3 o'clock, you better have dinner in your car because you're not going to get home in time. You are ruining the schools. I've never seen so many portables and children that are educated outside of a classroom in my life. You do not have the structure before you are building and giving approval. You talk about annexing another piece of property today, and yet it doesn't really matter. The people that own it are going to vote for it. They're the ones that have the say. They want the annexation. What is it going to do to the rest of us? You can tell us it's going to take 20 years and that maybe they're going to build estate houses. They can sell you a bill of goods. But until it's all approved, we don't know what's going in there, and neither do you. You have built, you have changed everything that you have. You have approved against recommendations of your own staff. You have taken property that is on the topography, it's hillside, and it's conservation pro, uh, development because it's going to be open land. And you're putting houses where they're going to, if one gets on fire, it could burn down three because they're so close together. Public safety isn't a concern, the children aren't a concern, and the constituents of this county aren't a concern. You've asked them to voice their opinion, they've taken the time to do it, and you can't respect it. How can we respect you and the politics that you're pulling in this county? It's absurd that you're doing this to the county and to the residents of it. Thank you. Commissioner. Hello. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm Commissioner Betsy Hester, and I do represent this area on Lewisburg Pike that is proposed for annexation. Uh, I do appreciate landowners and having them having the right to sell and develop their land, and I do appreciate the entrepreneurship of developers wanting to provide homes. My home is a spec home from many, many years ago. Uh, I am still concerned about traffic on Lewisburg Pike. 
There has been no mitigation money set aside from the state of Tennessee for enlarging Lewisburg Pike as there has been on, on future plans for Columbia Pike. I am a physical conservative. We'll have something like approximately 450 children in this development that's, uh, that's a, a possibility. The, I do appreciate the $5.6 million set aside for schools. That's not going to build half a school. That costs 30, at least 30 million to build an elementary school. That means I'm going to have to vote for raising taxes, possibly, on all of us. Uh, Lewisburg Pike, there again, Lewisburg Pike in 840, I mentioned last month, it's a death trap. Uh, I, I have a concern that Envision Franklin is not being followed in this development. Uh, we, we just, with the county commission, we voted for a 3% residential property tax. I, I don't want to have to continue raising taxes every year because we have over $700 million in debt now in Williamson County. We are in, we are hard pressed and I appreciate your listening. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Alderman, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Diane Giddens. I'm a resident of 4788 Bethesda Road in Thompson Station. I'm here tonight to ask you all to consider pushing the pause button. The people that make the uh, population projections are currently estimating that Williamson County's population is going to be near a half a billion people in 20 years. That's a short amount of time to get there. In January, the Franklin Planning Commission in, uh, adopted Envision Franklin, which was a guide compiled of multiple public citizen input meetings. They were adopted to set forth a framework that provides guidance in making land use decisions, managing the quality of development, determining the timing and location of future growth and direct investment and development opportunities. My question this evening is the South Brook subdivision that is proposed consistent with the Envision Franklin plan. Though the property is adjoining the city property and is in within your urban growth boundaries, does it have the look, feel, and character that you want for f the city of Franklin? As currently proposed, it consists of 318 acres to include single family, duplex, triplex, and quadplex residential development. The property is planned to have add new 749 new dwelling units. But why now? Why the rush? Why do we need to go south of Goose Creek? where you already know that Lewisburg Pike, the state of Tennessee, has no plans to do any road improvements to that already very busy, very dangerous roadway. Some of the uh, prior speakers have indicated about the time that it backs up, and it does. 840, I-65, you can't get south, you can't get home. I now have a 45-minute commute to work, used to have 20. I'm 12 miles south of Franklin. I ask you to please push the pause button. Commissioner, welcome. Hi, I'm Judy Herbert. I'm commissioner for the second district, which includes this. Um, Y'all were kind enough to listen to my comments earlier at the work session and answer my questions. So I'm just gonna make this short and sweet because I've already voiced a lot of my opinions. Um, I guess my worry is that there's going to be, if it gets approved, there'll be so many houses on it, and most of that land is unbillable land anyway. And so you're cramming all these houses, and, and then the green space is up on top of a hill, and we're losing all those trees, and the trees help with our climate and everything. So I'm, I guess I'm asking if it gets approved to limit the amount of houses on 
Because right now, if you put 700 houses, over 700 houses on this 300 acres, what you're doing, you're voting for a tax increase because it's a new school. That's what it is. So I'm just, and the traffic is awful. So I'm just asking you, I'd prefer you didn't approve it, but if you have to approve it, that you limit the amount of prop houses on it. Thank you. Please, Mr. Gamble. Hi, my name is Greg Gamble, and I'm representing the applicant for Southbrook. And um, it's hard to talk about just plan of services annexation. I'll raise it up. How's that? It's hard to just talk about them individually. Um, so if you don't mind, I'd like to uh, take a few minutes to talk about the holistic approach to the master plan of Southbrook. First, um, I want to say thank you so much to planning staff and engineering. Um, they have been willing to invest time with us and energy to achieve a really great master plan for Southbrook and truly create a special place. The amount of time spent as a team on this plan has been significant. We have really sought community input from the very beginning. We had five community meetings. Um, the requirement is to have one neighborhood meeting, but we had five intentional neighborhood meetings uh, at the Berry Farms, um, at the new hotel, to get input from county residents, from Stream Valley residents, from the Goose Creek uh, neighbors, uh, those who lived around us, and that was very helpful, and I want to thank the neighbors for giving us that input as well. Um, Ford has assembled 319 acres of land contiguous to the city of Franklin's city limits. It will be a 12-year master plan development built incrementally, approximately 60 to 70 homes per year. This is an already growing area. Berry Farms is only about 20 to 25 percent complete, yet it has entitlement today for 3 million square feet of office and 1.8 million square feet of retail. This is a significant number of new jobs coming to this corridor at Berry Farms, between 14 and 16,000 jobs, to be exact. We're starting to see those businesses now move in, and those businesses are already starting to grow. This is an opportunity, with the approval of Southbrook, to provide housing in close, immediate proximity to this job center. Mayor, would you mind if I extended my time? I would be... Um, Since you're the applicant. Uh, I will give you an additional minute. Thank you. This is one of the key elements to managed growth in Envision Franklin. One of the bullet points talks about residential housing in close proximity to our regional centers. Envision Franklin also addresses the need for neighborhoods that offer diversity of home types and encourages economic uh, mix within the neighborhood. The homes proposed in Southbrook range in purchase price from 250000 in the big houses up to over a million dollars. Uh, both proposed big house homes and the alley loaded single family homes are targeted to be less than 550,000. During the workshop, Mayor Moore asked about workforce housing and workforce housing is 150% of the median income. So for a family of four, the median income in our Nashville MSA is 80,000. So 150% of that would allow them to purchase about a $485,000 to $490,000 home. And that would qualify as workforce housing. The only aspect of our plan that staff cannot support is the introduction of a single family detached lot served by an alley that is less than 45 foot in width. These lots that we have on this plan add up to a total of about 70 uh, 27 percent, excuse me, 27 percent of the total homes within Southbrook. But these lots between 34 and 45 foot wide, they're not new in Franklin. In fact, we've been developing them over the past 20 years. They've been developed in West Haven, Simmons Ridge, Lockwood Glen, Echelon, Waters Edge, and Berry Farms. There are keys to incorporating them into the neighborhood, and we have done that successfully in Southbrook. I've left two sheets of paper uh, at your desk. One of them is this exhibit that shows the intersection of Goose Creek. On the left side, you have the existing condition. On the right side, you see the purple areas. These are the turn lanes that are being added to this intersection. 
Lewisburg Pike does not need to be a four lane road today. It needs improvements at this intersection specifically. Today, the intersection of Goose Creek and Lewisburg Pike operates at a level of service F with the average wait time of two minutes. With the improvements at this intersection and the addition of the traffic from Southbrook, that time will be cut in half. It will no longer be a failing intersection with these improvements. It takes development sometimes to solve some of these major problems and in this instance, Southbrook is able to come in and solve a problem. In addition, You'll finish on up, please. Absolutely. In addition, I left for you an uh, eight and a half by 11 um, that's up there. This is about the Williamson County Schools. Um, in addition to 500 or $5.7 million of impact fees that will be paid to the county, I wanted to point out um, Gosey Hill Road, Creekside Elementary, it's to open the winter of this year. It will have a capacity of 54%. Oakview Elementary will relocate a lot of those students to Gosey Hill, Gosey, uh, the Creekside Elementary will be, um, uh, will have Trinity Elementary School and uh, students from Oakview Elementary School there. They're in portables right now at Oakview Elementary School until Creekside Elementary opens. Um, Oakview will then be reduced to uh, an occupancy of 58%. Uh, Thompson Station Middle School currently has a capacity of 81%, and Oakview Elementary, or Oakview Middle School, excuse me, uh, with a capacity of 1,100 students. Um, does not have allocated student population yet, but it's supposed to open in the fall of 2020, so one year from today. Uh, Independence High School it was just increased to a population of 2,200 student capacity, and it's currently at 88%. Over the next five to 10 years, or in the next five to 10 years, I should say, um, Williamson County Schools is looking at locating a new high school within the West Haven area. So that's going to significantly change the, the population um, at Independence High School as well. All right. um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. I declare the public hearing closed. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Appropriate motion. Is there a second? Second. Second, second Alden Martin. Open for discussion. Any comments? Vice Mayor? You know, I the applicant said that we need that he needs to tie we need to tie all three four five of these together and i think that that that's that's possibly true but it's also not necessarily so we can we can look at it at a plan of services for the area without necessarily looking at annexation or rezoning we could look at annexation without rezoning uh, the property or suggesting that there's a rezoning that's more appropriate and less less uh, intrusive yeah. uh, in that particular area. So we don't have to necessarily uh, tie all these together. I voted for the plan of services, but I voted for plan of services before uh, based upon the based upon wanting to see what was needed out there and what was needed and what we what the city was requesting. So. When we get back to looking at annexation and or rezoning, those are two different, those are tied in issues, but they're not the same issues as what we're looking at here. And uh, it would be, uh, uh, you know, I've listened to both sides and uh, it's, a, it's a struggle to, uh, to say that we need to add another 700 and something homes into the 318 acres. So um, uh, I'll, I'll leave my comments for, for there. There may be others that want to make comments. Alderman Bransford. Well, since the last reading, uh, the first reading, I've taken some time to kind of review and to further review this area. And I inquired from some people that live in the area uh, of Lewisburg. Let me just give you a few numbers. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier today that we have so many things in the pipeline already. Berry Farm Town Center Apartments, 350, are to begin construction immediately, meaning they are probably digging dirt right now near the Publix. Ramsey Solution Campus Phase 1 is complete on the Ram Fleming track. 800 employees are moving to this building 
now. Ramsey Solution 2, Phase 2, is scheduled to begin immediately bringing an additional 800 employees to this site later next year. Edna Insurance Building is complete on the Rams Fleming track and will house 200 employees in the next 90 days. Um, in talking with some of the citizens in that area, one of the things that came up is, I heard the word pause, let's push a pause button, is that there's some things that probably need to be completed before we, we move forward on further annexation. Let's get some of this stuff completed. One thing we have on our CIP is the long lane overpass that is in the that is on our list. So our number one project. Our number one prior project. So that we should see that coming into into light. Fire station number seven is just beginning construction on Paynesville Road. These are things one more to add, three things we need to see come to fruition, in my opinion. The new middle school that's been mentioned, which is just beginning construction on Henpeck Lane, uh, adjacent to the Oakview Elementary. So just for my fellow board members, I think let's look at what we have in the pipeline. I'm a visionary. I think we should definitely be looking to the future, but I also believe that we need to try to balance and and not overstate one area and create problems in other areas. So what, what problems will we have by, po by pausing? What problems would we have by um, delaying? Um, and let's see how these 1,600 <coughs> new employees that may or may not, that will be coming to our community, I don't know how many is already here, but they will be driving and using our roads to get to their new workplace. And of course, we've talked about the students that will come with these new developments. Um, Stream Valley, still to be built now, 488 units. Berry Farm Chatwell, to be built, 100 units. Uh, Bear Rims Fleming's 400 Bear. units. And of course, the Berry Farm Town Center, 451. That's 1,439 total units to still be built in that area. So, when we were discussing this um, with, with, with citizens in the area, um, it gave me pause, and I wanted to make sure I shared that with you all and to see if this makes sense to you. Uh, for me, I would like to push the pause button. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman <clears throat> Um I tend to agree with Pearl, and I also tend to understand the idea of property rights for property owners, and I think that's important. <clears throat> So I'm not saying no, much like what you've heard tonight lately. Um, those statistics I've also been shared with, but, um, and I know we're here to represent the city of Franklin, but we have to understand that that edge of the city of Franklin continues to go further and further down the pike. Um, I have a daughter that lives off Kreitz Lane, and so I'm very familiar <laughs> with Lewisburg Pike and the traffic that's already on Lewisburg Pike trying to get from Franklin to even through where this proposed development is right now is already impossible. There are times before rush hour is even in full swing that you crest that first Goose Hill Hill, Goose Creek, Lewisburg Pike Hill before you hit Stream Valley and you're stuck. So the idea of adding 750 homes, which could be 1,400 cars to that, I, it, it I know firsthand, and I don't even live there because somebody I love lives that way. Um, I think the long lane overpass is a very good thing that would impede or, or help solve that. Um, 
I just, I don't think right now is the time. I don't, I think we've got to be cognizant of the growth we've already approved at Berry Farms, the growth that's coming, um, and even in Stream Valley that's not built to capacity. And what people don't understand is Berry Farms, while it right now hugs that one corner, it's going across the street and it's gonna back up right to where Stream Valley is. So um, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying not now. Anybody else? Alderman Martin, then Alderman Speedy. Uh, I'm very concerned about growth, as you know. However, in this case, I've, I've been looking very carefully at the, uh, the timeline the fire station seven, the overpass, the new school in Long Lane. Uh, these are top priorities for us. This development uh, looks big, but it's not gonna be developed all at once. It's gonna be a long process in development. And I'm not sure which one they're gonna start on, but. It's my understanding that they're not all going to be developed right away. So I think we, we could feel comfortable that the overpass and the new school and the fire station will probably be built about the same time the first development, part, the first part of this development is done. Uh, all of that information that that you talked about, Pearl, is it's very important. And it just reaffirms what I feel about growth. However, I see that this is very different from what we talked about earlier. That all that land that's out of the, the UGB. This this is is in our UGB and it it's by the interstate it's it's developable developable right now and i think that we would be maybe not very far sighted if we did not look at it right now alderman speedy um, i guess to piggyback on alderman martin i'd maybe ask the applicant to give us a more concrete timeline on the middle school, the fire station, and Long Lane, and maybe how many homes would be projected to even be built by the time those, th those three were completed. And then I guess my comments would be, we just heard from Mr. Gamble, also Alderman Bransford, how many jobs are coming to Berry Farms. Yeah, I just mentioned. And we also just sat through the South Corridor st study at the work session, and we heard about the number of commuters, probably more coming into Franklin, or at least an equal amount, so I do feel like this is a chance to potentially develop some homes closer to these job opportunities. Um, I guess we also heard from the applicant that yes, that, that intersection is a F failing right now, but with, with the additional homes in 12 years, with the improvements they're gonna make, I guess it, it, it improves that intersection. So um, I guess maybe the timeline question. Other comments? Alderman McClendon. Once upon a time, Alderman Dan Klatt suggested that we should annex the entire UGB right off the start to control the outcome. Um, I'm going to I'm going to separate, partly because they are in fact separate ordinances, but I'm going to separate the annexation from the approval of what might be done. If we don't annex then we don't control the outcome. If we do annex, then we do control the outcome. Um, I have some concerns, too, about the intensity of this development, particularly on Lewisburg, particularly um, south, <clears throat> when you get to that, um, that edge of town, if you will. Um, but I do think that it's in our UGB, um, and we are in a position to um, to properly regulate the outcome here. So I'm going to support the annexation and then uh, we'll see what people have to say about the 
plan in particular? Alderman Berger. <clears throat> we talked this evening about, <clears throat> excuse me, we talked this evening about <clears throat> developing where infrastructure exists and where infrastructure can easily, easily be placed, where there is sewer capacity. Those things are very, very important. I know there's areas over near where I represent off of um, East, 60, uh, East 96 that are much more impractical due to the uh, Mays Creek Basin limitations, um, infrastructure limitations, sewer, water. So this area, I think the city has looked at very seriously for development because of the infrastructure, because of the close proximity to 65. Um, I did vote for the plan of services because I think we need that. We need, we need to know the information that comes from those plans of services. So um, I would encourage the board to, um, uh, we've already voted, so we have that in our pocket right now, so we can get that information. I think that's going to be very helpful. Um, I agree with uh, Alderman McClendon. Um, I, I think we do, this is in our UGB, um, whatever UGB means this, these days, because it's um, been sort of um, done away with, in, in a, in, so to speak, by the state government. But um, I do think that it still is recognized as area in our UGB, and I think we do need to annex it in to control it in the future. But I would ask the developer if they would be willing to defer, when we get to the development plan, to defer the development plan so they can go back and work with our planning department and, and come and speak uh, more uh, in depth again to the board and work through the planning department as well, the planning commission, to talk about how this development should look. The other thing I would encourage uh, the two commissioners that spoke, um, uh, Commissioner Lynch and uh, Hes uh, Commissioner Hester, uh, I would encourage you to, uh, Greg, as I believe Greg, uh, Commissioner Greg Lawrence is here tonight too somewhere, and, and we have gone and spoken to the MPO um, many, many times to try to encourage uh, the state to look at doing something sooner than later, <laughs> and, and that's a, a, a strange thing to say, but uh, when you look at the timeline that they even have listed for Wilson Pike. So I would encourage those commissioners to go to the MPO, to go to the state and speak up for Lewisburg Pike that is in the county. Speak up for that road. And I would encourage um, Alderman Speedy to join them uh, for the part that is in our um, city as well. But most of that is in the county. And then if you take Lewisburg Pike to where uh, Commissioner Hester spoke to, I, uh, to 840, I think that is extremely important down there. But that, again, that's in the county. I would, I would really encourage you to go and speak and fight for, the, for that with the state. Having said that, I think that um, I will definitely vote for the annexation. I do think the city needs to be controlling this, and I um, will, will vote for that. But I would ask the developers who are here, the applicant who is here right now, to consider possibly asking for a deferral withdrawal, no, maybe a deferral for at least about three, four, or five months to take a good look at this plan and work with our development uh, and our planning department. Thank you. Any other comments? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Here. That's four to four. Oh. Sorry. I always it's get to you. vote on ties. Well, I'm going to support the annexation. I think that uh, it's appropriate. It's close to the I-65 corridor. It's close to employment centers, and I think it fills a need in our community. And, and I also think that the infrastructure there, and it's, if we're managing growth, we need to manage it where we have the appropriate things. So I support it, so it passes five to four. Five to five four. four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four. so we'll move on to item number five. This is a public hearing consideration of ordinance uh, to, reason, to zone 318.49 acres specific development residential district SDR hillside overlay district Goose Creek character area overlay district and Macklemore character area um, overlay district 
either conventional or traditional standards for several properties located east and west of Lewisburg Pike and north and south of the intersection of Stream Valley Boulevard. Um, Amy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you said, the requested zoning for this, these parcels is specific development residential. When considering the uses, staff looks to Envision Franklin, and both uh, design concepts in Envision Franklin support this use of residential in this, air, in this area. Therefore, staff recommends approval. Mayor. Alderman McClendon. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait. This is a public hearing, so. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to ask staff to, if we could, before we get to the public hearing, because it may preclude some of the things that might otherwise happen at public hearing, could you tell us what, if any, um, I don't want to say deviations, but non-compliance with the Envision Franklin are presented in the plan? Um, can I hold off on that until we discuss the development plan? Okay. This is about the rezoning, but That's, I can certainly okay. do that at that time. Yeah, just address that whenever we get to that. So okay. the, public hearing, the, the public hearing is open, and uh, I still have a number of speaker cards that I'm confused about which ones want to speak on the uh, zoning. So, uh, uh, Mr. Gamble, I'm not going to be as lenient with you this time. Uh, I generally give uh, the applicant a little more time. Uh, uh, so, I'll go ahead. And anybody else that wants to speak on it that have your speaker cards up here um, please step forward i'll be short we're listening very closely to the comments uh, really from all of the aldermen we appreciate the input tonight uh, we understand that uh, it sounds like we need to sharpen our pencil and go back to our plan um, we'll be happy to request deferral of the both the zoning and the development plan uh, we'd like to start with 60 days um, if i need to get with administration um, over the next 30 days to extend that i certainly will uh, but i'd like to start with that move to defer to our Wait a minute. Well, we can't do a public not, hearing. Okay. Public hearing is not closed yet. Anybody else want to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion. Mayor, I'll move, move that we defer to our date certain in uh, the second meeting in October. We don't have a meeting. We don't have a. Oh, that's <laughs> the election. Election. How convenient. First one in November. November 12th. <clears throat> November. I move that we defer this item to November 12th. Second. Appropriate motion, second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number six, this is a public hearing consideration resolution 2019-40 is amended a resolution approving the development plan for Southbrook PUD subdivision for several properties located east and west of Lewisburg Pike and north and south of the intersection of Stream Valley Boulevard. Amy? Did would you, you like me to get my report? Or do we... At this point, it seems unlikely. A motion coming from Alden yep. McClendon. Uh, I don't have a request at this point because it seems like there might be a deferral. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is there anyone that wants to speak to this body that had their speaker card here? If not, I'm going to... Well, well, they're going to do it anyway, so... Okay, Mr. Ritchie. Yes, sir. Please, two minutes. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Steve Ritchie. I'm a resident of Stream Valley. My backyard uh, backs up to that green box that was on the east side of Lewisburg Pike and my fence is Southbrook. So this development really impacts me. Um, I am not opposed to the Southbrook, uh, Southbrook development, but given Envision Franklin, I'd hope approval would only happen after development plans are changed to meet Envision Franklin guidance. I attended the June 27th Planning Commission meeting where three of nine members voted against Southbrook due to noncompliance with Envision Franklin. This is the first time I'd heard of this plan, and I understand the Planning Commission staff recommended against approval of Southbrook development because it lacked compliance with the Envision Franklin guidelines. However, the Planning Commission voted 6 to 3 in favor of it. What I've learned about Envision Franklin, which was adopted in January 17, is it's a planned document, provides guidance for future development in the city, so I'm assuming it's very important to the board. At this time, I don't believe the proposed Southbrook development meets Envision Franklin guidelines. Per Envision Franklin, Southbrook is on a, or in a conservation subdivision, as shown in the Envision Franklin di design concept map, page 26, Figure 4.1, which is this printed out copy that I brought with me. Page uh, 
34 of Envision Franklin defines a conservation subdivision as a less dense development planned with large continuous tracts of open space. A map at the bottom left corner of this page 34 shows the concept, and I don't believe Southbrook meets this concept. Here's why. Page 35 of Envision Franklin under lot size, left side of the page defines conservation subdivision home types and specifies all single family lots should be 45 feet wide or larger. When I reviewed the Gamble design map, I'm done, I guess. No, I'll give you a few more minutes. Thank You're you. about to wind up. When I reviewed the design map uh, that Mr. Gamble presented at the June 27th meeting, I noted the following for phase one, which is where my house backs up to phase one. 23 lots are 34 to 40 feet wide. 22 lots are 40 to 44 feet wide. Seven condo buildings. 31 lots are 45 to 61 feet wide. So 45 of the 83 buildings, or 54% of the buildings in this phase, do not meet Envision Franklin guidelines. Phase two of Southbrook, which is north of Stream Valley entrance, is just as bad regarding density. And it appears the bulk of Southbrook's phases have similar, similar density statistics. Page 38, referencing Lewisburg Pike, states new development should have deep setbacks. It doesn't define what deep is because the design, is, as Mr. Gamble's drawn it, only goes back to the first houses of Stream Valley. And Stream Valley, those homes were built back in 2008 and 2009. With this plan, Envision Franklin, 2017, I don't understand if there's a difference in definition or not. So in conclusion, since 54% of Southbrook's current phase one doesn't adhere to Envision Franklin guidelines, I'm opposed to development, uh, to the development's approval. If Envision Franklin guidelines prevail, what percentage of non-compliance, if any, is acceptable to the board? How will approval as currently designed in violation of Envision Franklin set a precedent on future developments to justify plans and obtain city approval in violation of Envision Franklin. And if anyone wants it, I brought two more letters from my, uh, some of my neighbors who are also against the development as proposed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Do I have a speaker card for you, sir? Yes, you do. Okay, what's your name, please, sir? Brian Davis. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Please introduce yourself and... Uh, Brian Davis, 115 Gosling Drive, Franklin, Tennessee. Live in Goose Creek Estates. My comments are specific to the uh, northeast portion of South Brook that borders Goose Creek. Um, our neighborhood, as much as we'd love to see it stay fields and cows and the way it has been for 22 years, we realize that's an unrealistic expectation. There are about five items that I emailed out yesterday that we would like to be considered as additional restrictions to the PUD. If it's going to be delayed, then we have time to work that out. If not, I'd like to get it on the record uh, tonight. Uh, two of the first, the first two items relate to the short connector drive from the north-south spine drive within Southbrook uh, for the emergency only entrance gate that lines with Cattail Lane, our subdivision. We simply, the gist of it, we would like for that not to appear to be a continuation of the entrance drive to Southbrook by uh, installing a low profile curb in line with the rest of the street to give a visual symbol, that a signal that it's not a continuation of the street. And for that short piece of approximately 50 foot to either be some type of uh, brick pavers on concrete so the trucks are supported or something that looks different as opposed to looking just like a continuation of the drive someone could actually evidently uh, go through the gate or use it as parking space. Our third item would be a landscape buffer that uh, Mr. Gamble sent something today, I believe has already been addressed, uh, a continuation of that buffer of 50 foot all along our western border. Uh, but I would like to have a, a high and a low canopy um, statement added to that so that we do get some height to that buffer. The fourth item would be glare protection uh, not just light pollution that you would deal with with your foot candle count at the property line, but the actual glare. Our subdivision does not have street lights. We've enjoyed the stars for 22 years and would like to keep them for as long as we could. Uh, we know it has to be lit, but our, our comments would be directed towards um, trying to restrict 
uh, the corner flood lights on the homes closest to us and the street lights are 360 degree lights, some kind of a shield so we're not staring right at the glare. Uh, the last comment, and I'll be quick, is dealing with the traffic and at the same intersection everyone spoke about tonight. Our subdivision enters very close to that intersection. It's a single entrance and exit. Right now trying to come out of that subdivision, turn left in the mornings is near impossible. Um, because of the right hand turn on red for everybody coming from Stream Valley down and making a right. So I would just ask as that intersection change is planned that we have some kind of consideration, special consideration or participation in how that might work with our entrance to uh, not impede us any further than it has. That's Thank it. you. Appreciate the time. Any other public comments? Seeing none, I pray the public hearing close entertain a motion. Uh, Mayor, I move that we defer this matter to November 12th. Second. Appropriate motion, second. Any discussion? Ready to vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes unanimously. Item seven, contract number 2019-0172, Parkland Impact Fee and Trail System Construction Agreement between the City of Franklin and Southbrook LLC. This is, this you need to defer everything else. Everything. Yeah. So uh, just for clarification, the road impact uh, oh. offset fee also? Yes. Okay, so I'll look for a motion to defer. Move to defer Seven. November 12th. Second. Appropriate motion, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number eight is the road impact fee offset agreement for the Southbrook PV subdivision. I'd ask for deferral. So move. move. To the uh, to November date. November 12th. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman. Burger, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes unanimously. Item number nine. This is a public hearing. Consideration of resolution 2019-61 approving a revised development plan for Lockwood Glen PUD subdivision for the property located east of Carruthers Parkway and south of South Carruthers Road. Amy? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the main changes to this development plan revision is that the applicant is taking the units that were in another section of the development plan that has been since removed from this PUD and place those units within the remaining sections of the PUD through a plan. Uh, the other main change is that an additional external access point has been proposed to the north of the property along South Carruthers Road. Staff recommends approval. Does anyone want to speak to this body? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. Entertain a motion. Move for approval. Appropriate motion by Alderman Martin. Second. Second by the Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes <coughs> unanimously. Item number 10 is the resolution 2019-64 to adopt the Franklin Trails brand strategy brand mark plan. Move, Move for, for approval. approval. Appropriate motion. Uh, Second. Second by Alderman Martin. That was uh, Alderman Bransford. Second by Alderman Martin. Any discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 11 is uh, resolution 2019-68, a resolution to adopt a project list for FY 2019-28 CIP program. Is there a motion? Move approval. Appropriate Second. motion. Seconded by Alderman Martin. Any discussion? Alderman yeah. Vice Mayor. Uh, you know, we had an issue. We had an, uh, an issue tonight, just where the uh, drainage for uh, Parkview Drive and all of that came up in seventeen million dollars into that. That's that's not even in this. Part of it's not even in this. And and I, to be quite candid with you, I'm not comfortable in voting on the list as it is. Mm -hmm. I know it's a it, it it is a for the lack of a better term, it's a moving list. And we have things that come up that we need to to go back and, and redo. And we also have changes and opportunities to leverage money that we have coming in. But to, to go back in and look at this right here, knowing that we had $640 million, knowing that each of us had an opportunity to go to the grocery store and spend $150 million, knowing that based upon some of the things that we did, some some of us even spent 159 million when we did not include a project in the in the pipeline here that has to be done. 
if Brentwood funds that, Absolutely. it has to be done. So therefore, well, to come back in here and pull and, and do this, I'm not comfortable in, 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 in saying yes to this item right here. I, uh, we've got the list. We, we sort of know what we're going to do. As the projects come forward, uh, they, they're, they're prioritized uh, pretty much on an as-needed basis. And, I, and I, there's three or four road projects on there that uh, uh, I see as being top priority for me, but uh, they may not be for somebody else. So I'm not going to I'm going to vote for this. And, and I think the classic example is the is the Parkview drainage project that we just discussed and looked at tonight. That would impact this right here by 12 million, 17 million, wh whichever whichever motion we whichever plan we took, one, two, or three. Three would be less, but uh, I, I would prefer not to not to do this, and I won't uh, vote to support the uh, the resolution. Alderman Martin. Um, Clyde, are you saying that that is not on this list? The no, part two. Yeah, it is. Some of it is. Some of it is, Some Some of it is Martin. The beginning of it is. <clears throat> Some of it is. Yes. Well, that's five. That's five years worth right here. What's five years? Uh, Church Street, Columbia Avenue to Second, the eleven million. But but the project that we looked at tonight, Marty, was seventeen million. Well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Well, don't well, we look at the whole thing? Well, it's going to take a long time to get, do it in phases. Well, and we'll do this CIP in two years again. Yeah. Exactly. We go back through this. We'll two review years. this in two years. We'll make adjustments to the CIP in two years. And we'll make we'll make periodic adjustments to this plan on a on a not a monthly basis probably, but mm -hmm. on a basis of opportunities where we can leverage money. And uh, like I said, I, I don't um, I simply don't see. Uh, I'm having a difficult time seeing how this helps us when we know it's going to change. Alderman Branchford. Well, I. I I, I guess my question would be, how do we add that opportunity time? I think uh, Mr. Stuckey did mention opportunity projects, but how do we, in the midst of, let's say we approve something like this, and then six months down the road, something fall out the sky and a great opportunity, how do, how do we add that or how do we put that into the system or do we just ignore it? And so that would be my question. I don't mind approving this list knowing that there is a mechanism mm -hmm. where an opportunity situation could be, could bump something, for lack of a better word. I mean, that's almost what will have to happen. Do you want me to address that? Yes, well, sir. Could I, could I make a comment oh. about the opportunity list? If you look at them and see which one of them, I don't know when it says outside funding, some of them have like $2 million, but a bunch of them have nothing. So I'm unsure why they would be called part of opportunity funding. But first of all, so. there is a document that's provided to you that goes through project by project on that opportunity mm -hmm. list. I, I think that gives you an overview as to why those were selected. Yeah. Not that list, the other list that goes project by project. Um, so that may be helpful, um, and I'm glad to talk about any specifics. But what, what we are in the process of and, and the, the kind of the way we've adapted the capital investment planning process is to do a 10-year outlook and update it every two years. So, um, you know, we've identified capacity um, over $300 million, about, I think, 308 uh, range. We've given you projects that are a little shy of $280 million within that group. We think we've been conservative, especially on the development-related revenue, uh, impact fee, parkland, road impact, et cetera, that, that might affect those. So we've given you what we think is uh, – a manageable group of projects. The first 13 on that list were reflected in your top 10, either a weighted or non-weighted approach. Um, so, you know, we want to move forward on the projects you want us to pursue, but we really need you to give us that guidance or these projects will wait. So um, if you're more comfortable with a portion of this list, that's an option for you. Um, you know, I, I, I think, uh, 
we'll follow your guidance on how you want to do it, but we also have projects that are, are uh, have been working through the process. We've done a significant amount of planning on them, and you know we need your guidance on, on what you want to fund and how you want to move forward. Uh, we won't until you tell us to. Alderman McClendon. <clears throat> well, I frequently find myself saying things like, well, the fact that we've always done it this way is not a good reason to do it this way again. Or I sometimes say things like, the fact that it took a long time to make this decision doesn't mean that it was right. However, in this case, we've spent a long time building a consensus, doing a little bit of a tug of war with staff, um, advocating for our, our own particular projects of interest, multiple committee meetings, multiple special meetings, multiple um, board meetings, um, an exhaustive analysis of the financing um, mechanisms and capabilities. I, I think it's time that we make a commitment and not a partial one and not start culling things out of this capital improvements plan list because with all due respect, the perfect is the enemy of the good. And we will never have a, 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 comp, a, a capital improvements plan that contemplates, plans for, and accommodates every single project or moment of opportunity that comes up. And if that, if we hadn't had that presentation tonight with a dollar figure attached to it, would anyone have any reservations about moving the capital improvements project forward? Mm -hmm. Well, no, probably not, because we've spent so long building this consensus. So the timing of that $17 million problem shouldn't derail a $650 million analysis or whatever. How much is it? Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole list is about $711 okay, so, million, I mean, and you've I, got about let's $280. Don't, let's, don't, let's, don't, let's don't trip over three quarters of a billion dollars to get to 17 million. We'll, 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 we'll figure out how to build that project in. And in fact, some of it is funded. Um, I just, I don't want to go back through the politics of trying to recycle and reevaluate only some of this list because that just, that blows up the whole financing mechanism that blows up the whole, you know, uh, timing that we went through. I mean, this was a this was a long and excruciating process. Um, I'm ready to vote yes because the people out there need to know what we're supporting. We just had a whole slew of people in here who told us no more roofs, lots more roads. In case you weren't listening, well, look at that project list. Look how many roads are on it. Look how many roads are on it that those people desperately want in many cases. So I, I say we vote for this thing, and frankly, I would rather throw the thing out altogether than start piecemealing it out. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna vote for it because it represents the collective will of the eight of us, a ton of staff, the mayor, and uh, months and months and months worth of, of uh, trade-offs and time and work. Alderman Peterson. Mr. Mayor, I want to say, first of all, if you look back at these, some of them are top priority. Uh, first of all, I want to say not much on roads. I mean, what they call in transportation might be a sidewalk. I'm not kidding you. There, that you look back at this, there's not that much on roads. But the other thing is, we need to look back at this. I mean, some of these things are extremely expensive and I don't want, I kind of don't want to get us started on some of the things where it may be some time for us to think about. And very honestly, whenever you're talking about the amount of money that it's going to cost for all of this, I, I, I don't see that we've said, oh, we've got all the money in the world to, to, to uh, borrow for all of this. I don't think we do. And so, um, some of them, you know, if it was a if it was a top uh, top ten, uh, I mean a top, uh, I guess a top ten, I might go along with them. But honestly, whenever I'm even looking at them, 
uh, it was mentioned uh, the other day about the new city hall costing $24 million is one of the top tier. Uh, I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, the Mallory, North Royal, Oaks, and Liberty intersection improvements. We've t $15 million. We've talked about that. But I don't know that there's been any complete consensus about whether we want the roundabouts out there or not. And so uh, what I'm saying is that, that a lot of these things, um, again, now, McEwen uh, Drive Extension, yeah. Wilson yeah. Pike to the local, that, that if Brentwood wants to do it, then we have to. We have we have already agreed Six. to put that money in there. But Seven. but on on some of these others, Seven. whenever it talked about an opportunity tier, I go back and look at some other things, saying how much money is coming from somewhere mm -hmm. else. There's there's some of it that is coming from uh, uh, somewhere else. You know. Uh, uh, like um, the, the working with the Franklin Special School District, they've agreed to to pay a certain amounts with this. But if you look back on a lot of these things that that we're talking about here, I don't know that there's necessarily a big opportunity there. I don't see money that anybody else is going to put in on them. So I'm I'm not quite sure why we're talking about an opportunity. Well, I take that back. There's one the 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 home raising. It says that that. Uh, the obviously we've got the twenty two point six million dollars and there would be one point four million for us, but in fact that's not the case because haven't we already said that the homeowners were gonna have to pay half of that? Mm -hmm. So that there there might be something like that here, but if you look on the rest of them, there's not that much money in that's coming from somebody else. So I'm not positive why we would say it's an opportunity here. Any other comments? I mean, I, I just like to get somebody to talk to us about it. Maybe if, I, I know nobody wants to do another meeting about it, but I'm going to tell you, whenever I look back at this and look at some of the numbers, it doesn't make, it doesn't make me think that we ought to say, Mr. yes, we agree to all this. I, I have Mayor. a comment, if I might. Um, you know, I've sat through an awful lot of meetings, uh, just as all of you have looking at all this capital project list. I've listened to all the staff input. I spent a lot of time ranking my projects just like you did. And we've had since the July break an opportunity to have input to staff if there were things that we didn't like about this. There have been zero comments. Well, well may I say? No, I wait a minute. I'm okay. talking, okay. Alderman Peterson, okay. and then you may speak. Uh, that frustrates me a little bit that all of a sudden we're down here getting ready to vote and, and then we're wanting to change things. You know, we've heard from our citizens uh, about a number of infrastructure projects that we need to be doing. You know, to me, if we ditch this tonight, basically we're getting rid of the roadmap and we're going to go out and be like Daniel Boone, forge a new trail. We've put too much work in, into this to throw it aside. It's still going to come back for us to look at things on this on this project list. It doesn't mean that we've funded every single one of them. They still have to come back for us to look at the particulars and so on. So we need to move forward and vote on this and support it. Now, you feel Mr. free to reply Mr. to Mr. me May, now. I, I want to say, you said since the July break and everything, some of us, like me, have been spending a lot of time on this 500 500 page zoning ordinance that has nothing so, to do with this no, Alderman no, Peterson. no wait it, it has a lot to do it has a lot to do with what you want to do no, with no, your no, time no, i understand that it, it, but i mean we all have only a certain amount of time and so i mean you've spent a lot of time on this but but as i say Mayor, whenever i look back here and say again whenever i looked at the Alderman opportunity tier Berger. I, I call a question all ready to vote? Well, you have to get a second, on, and then you have to vote on that. Yep. I will second the call. Question. Okay. Uh, call the question. It's been seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Opposed. Passes six to two. All right. You ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Uh, no. Passes six to two. We'll move on to item number 12. 
authorizing the city administrator to execute a road impact offset agreement with Parks Development Group. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Appropriate motion. Is there second. a second? Second by Alderman Martin. Any discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 13, City of Franklin Contract 2019-0096 is amended parkland dedication and construction in agreement between the City of Franklin and Legacy Cool Springs LLC concerning the development known as Huffines Ridge. Move for approval. Second. Seconded by the Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 14, resolution 2019-076, a resolution adopting the Williamson County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Appropriate motion. Second. Second by the Vice Mayor. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 15, consideration ordinance 2019-26 to be entitled an ordinance to establish a four-hour time limit for all public parking spaces located on West Main Street between 5th <laughs> Avenue and 7th Avenue. Move approval. Second. Mayor. Appropriate motion, seconded by. I must support every four hour ordinance that comes. Because yeah. I think it was a mistake to get away from it. And I think it's the only balance that we can strike. It's, the, it's, it's an imperfect balance that is the least imperfect of the choices in my humble opinion. <laughs> And I will support that because we were the two descending votes when this was put yep. into implementation in the first place. Any other discussion so that, or comments? Can, can I Alderman? Yeah. T talk, tell, say again the whole thing. I mean, they. What the motion was yeah. was to approve. Four, hour. four hours. Four hours. Um, basically, a four hour agreement. Let's see here. West of five points. Option four. Lost. The winner has to bring it back. For this location. Uh, establish a four-hour time limit for all public parking okay. spaces located on West Main Street between 5th and 7th. Well, as I say, I, I, with, with the comments that we made, I, I would, uh, you know, at the, at the work session, I would not be in favor of this. Alderman Martin. What does that mean? Just, just between 5th and 7th? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Four hours? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right, I would like to make, I'd like to amend that. Okay. Uh, um, to make it uh, limitless from 6th to 7th on both sides of the street. 6th to 7th. 6th Avenue to 7th Avenue. So basically you want option. No time limit. 6th. Six. Six All day. Seven. Option three, maybe, Option but that's three. got two-hour parking. Option three. Option With four-hour parking, though, yeah, between fifth and six. I don't want to. I want whatever you want on uh, on the rest of that block. I just want it from <coughs> six to seven. From six to seven on the north side and the uh, the part in front of the church on the south side appropriate amendment is there a second to the amendment seeing no second the amendment dies are you, you did ready? you did your thing miss martin are you ready to vote yeah. no well let's, well, let's uh, we go on, ahead man. vice mayor you know we yeah. spent several minutes discussing this i, I well, options one two three four five and six Seven. We at seven, whatever it was, we had a consultant <laughs> come through. We spent, we we just got through spending months and months on the on the traffic study. You just got through making a comment that we spent months and months and months on the capital improvements project, and yet tonight we're coming back and taking and redoing Fifth Avenue to Seventh Avenue. Alderman McClendon has already said if there's another opportunity comes, he's going to vote for four hours anywhere else. If we're going to if we're going to take away all of the four-hour parking, and that's what we're gradually looking as if we're going to do, that needs to be that needs to be discussed in its in, in its entirety or in its whole, not necessarily just piecemeal together. And and I'm not going to support taking away the, whatever we've done and and in order to you know. I, 
it, we, we've got issues of parking, and they're not just on Fifth Avenue to Seventh Avenue. Exactly we've right. got issues of parking, and to put no limit on parking, <laughs> or four hours or whatever it is. 1980 called. They want their parking back. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Mr. Mayor, but may I say we were approached by somebody who asked for this. Right. So it's not like we're willy-nilly. We're not willy-nilly choosing this, but we're deciding on what was brought in front of us by somebody. And I bet Brandy who, and I would bring it back, but we lost. Yeah. Yep, right. This was our revenge one piece at a time. <laughs> 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 time to bring it back. Any other discussion? Good points. So what option are we the, the We're getting four punchy. Four it's, it's Just all four, four hours. hours on both okay. sides of the street That's between 5th and 7th. Four seven. hours We're still there, right? right now we have two hours in front of the commercial spots. We have yes. two hours. Two hours that whole area. Is two Everywhere. Hours. Until they come back to us. But, but the thing the thing is stated With no restrictions by, on 5th and 6th. By Alderman McClendon, this is just the beginning. This is just the tip, of the, just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. You're right. We're prophetic. Okay, I've anybody else want to make a, a comment other than no. off the cuff? Should we call it? No, let's go ahead and vote. So Ready to vote? Yes. yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Oh, no. Passes uh, five to three. Wow. Oh. Wait. Who, who voted passes. against? Passes. It's two hour right it passes. now. Passes. It's two hour. Who, who voted against? I did. I did. I did. That's four against. Yeah, so it's another tie. <laughs> oh, who voted against? I did, I'm sorry. These I two? That, Raise your hand if you voted against it. One, two, three, three, four. Right. Four. Right. four. That's four. four. You voted Great, against. I get to vote again. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> night for this you. Is truly, your lucky <laughs> night. <laughs> You're making history. You make yes, history. you are. Huh? <laughs> First time you voted you twice in that, ten It's years. live TV, Mayor. <laughs> live <laughs> TV, and I'm, I'm thinking about my options. <laughs> Alderman Martin, I'm I'm getting ready to vote. Oh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need music. I'm going to support uh, the motion as made originally to uh, establish a four hour time limit for the parking between 5th and 7th. I think that's a good compromise. I'm not supportive of changing all the rest of the parking. We hadn't come yet. You hours. might change your mind. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it passes uh, five to four. I love these votes. <laughs> I love these late meetings too. All right, we're going to 16. Request for water and sewer availability approval for Hillsborough Road, 1819. Made for approval. Second. Uh, thank goodness this isn't controversial. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. And then a request for sewer availability. Availability to Nile for 2271 South Berry's Chapel Road. Move for approval. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next is item 18, consideration procurement award to Hayes Pipe Supply of Nashville, Tennessee, in the total amount of $146,463.25 for supply and delivery of PVC pipe and ductile iron fittings to be used for construction of a new reclaimed water line to Berry Farm Subdivision, a Ream Fleming track for the reclaimed water system division of the Water Management Department. Is there a motion, please? Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by. Mayor, I, would you reread that? I didn't get that. <laughs> you know, my hearing is kind of gone tonight, <laughs> Vice Mayor. <laughs> my left ear is becoming. It deaf. must be late. Clyde's getting punchy. Who was it that seconded that? Seconded that. Me. Dana, okay, good. Good pick up. Any discussion on that other than the deafness of the mayor? All in favor say <laughs> aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Item number 19, consideration ordinance 2019 20 to rezone 20.90 acres from general commercial district to specific developmental residential variety 11.34 district for the property located east of Carruthers Parkway and south of Murfreesboro Road 250 Rosa Helm Way. 2050 and 2051 Wood Duck Court, establishing a public hearing date of 9 10 19. Is there a motion? Move for approval. Second. Seconded by Alderman Martin. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. I need a motion to go into executive session. No. Oh, boy. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderman McClendon. All in favor say aye. aye. Are there any matters to be considered from executive session? 
All as per planning. usual. Mayor, I move that we authorize city administrator and city attorney to enter such agreements as may be necessary to continue our relationship with the Tennessee Fair Housing Council. Second, sir. Uh, was there a uh, HUD in there too? No, that's fine. Uh, okay, perfect. Is there a second? I said second. Oh, I'm sorry. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Move to adjourn. Second. Motion <laughs> second. All in favor say aye. aye. You got the tag. They're going to think we're dating or something, Dana. All right. They're going to think what y'all are on.